uh, thank everyone for the organ for the invitation. And um, uh, you know, I'm here uh, today. Uh, my name is Stan Rose. I'm CEO of Transplant Genomics, and here talking on behalf of our uh, True Graph Blood Gene Expression Test. So um, there's already been some discussion earlier in the morning regarding the whole the general area of transplant diagnostics. Um, the area that we're really focused on is really the urgent need to improve surveillance of kidney transplant recipients with stable renal function. Um, importantly, as you know, as differentiated from um, trying to follow up once there is suspicion of a problem. Uh, there's a phenomenon known as um, silent subclinical rejection, which we'll refer to at times as uh, using this acronym SUBAR. Um, that occurs in stable patients. And there's now been data published over the last few years demonstrating clearly worse outcomes in patients that are identified to have um, subclinical rejection present. Um, it's frequent. Um, when uh, prospective studies have been done, uh, approximately 25% of patients with stable renal function in the first year post-transplant and in the second year post-transplant um, uh, show evidence by um, histology following biopsy of subclinical acute rejection. Um, until now, unfortunately, the only way to effectively rule this out in, again, apparently stable patients has been through invasive uh, surveillance biopsies, as they're called. And um, that's really what we set out a, f a number of years ago to, um, to solve, um, to really address this urgent need with a new test, um, which we offer under the uh, brand name TrueGraph. Um, and uh, we believe it's the first uh, properly um, clinically validated non-invasive test that provides an alternative to an invasive surveillance biopsy for ruling out um, silence of AR and uh, policy what you dealt with with the static. So moving on here, um, I think it's important to point out that uh, TrueGraph is not a test of renal graft damage. Um, we're actually looking specifically um, at gene ex blood gene expression profiles that indicate immune status, and in particular, whether or not a patient has um, a blood gene expression profile that looks like a reference population that is proven by biopsy um, to have no sign of anything abnormal going on um, versus uh, the alternative, where there is a problem even at the borderline level, um, which is referred to as, as subclinical rejection. Um, there's a variety of tests already in the marketplace um, serving this patient population to follow up once a problem is suspected. Uh, we believe this is the first test um, that it can really be used to effectively um, track uh, stable patients and uh, rule out the presence of a problem such as subclinical rejection um, in the app without having to do a surveillance biopsy. There's quite a bit of data that we presented um, uh, during the technical assessment. Um, uh, we're really uh, uh, grateful for the review. Uh, all this work is published. Um, all this work can be uh, found by looking at our website for the links to the various publications. Um, so aside from, um, we think, thorough demonstrations of clinical validity, analytical validity, um, and, and the required clinical utility, um, we're, we're particularly excited about the uniformity of the experience in different transplant centers. So in seven different transplant centers that participated um, in these studies, uh, really the same high-level performance in very effectively ruling out um, subclinical rejection um, when it was proven biopsy to, um, to not be there. So, um, you know, in a nutshell, uh, that's the high-level story. Um, we strongly support the draft LCD. Look forward to uh, a final LCD being issued. Um, there is a note, and we again, are thankful to the um, group of Palmetto for um, uh, putting the notation on the website because there was a typographical error uh, when these slides were put together that wasn't there yet, so um, it's there now. And, um, and again, thank you, and with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Mm -hmm.